Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today for our roundtable discussion is based on an article by the Salt Lake Tribune that appeared recently, a, an editorial. And uh, this editorial uh, deals with economists thinking that more parks, more wilderness is better for the future of the economy here in the state of Utah than any other choice that we could make. So to discuss this, joining us from Garfield County is the chair of the Garfield County Commission, Mr. Claire Ramsey. We have George Pyle, one of the uh, authors uh, and contributors to the editorial from the Salt Lake Tribune, and Mark Ward from the Utah Association of Counties. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. George, let's start with you. Um, let's talk a little bit about the editorial position of the Salt Lake Tribune. It's been fairly clear that the Trib is, is very supportive of this. And, and what is the basis for that? Well, we've always felt that Utah is better off if uh, we go through the process and we do as much as we can to preserve the wild areas, wilderness, uh, national parks, state parks, uh, national monuments, that in the long run that those will be uh, more advantageous for Utah, both from a, from a cultural aspect, from a, from a human aspect, from a humane aspect, and from an economic approach. Uh, these things uh, create jobs, they draw tourists, they uh, uh, create jobs for restaurants and gas stations and hotels, not in wilderness areas, but, but nearby, and that they have a potential, uh, properly managed, to do so in perpetuity, as opposed to the old-fashioned extractive economies, which are here today, gone tomorrow, and leave the communities uh, cleaning up the mess. Is it then the idea that while we have about two and a half million acres of, of uh, land protected as wilderness, uh, we have about uh, five million, I believe, in wilderness study areas across the state, and we have proposals of taking up to nine and a half million additional acres, um, you know, is, is that the kind of land uh, dedication that the Trib thinks is the, is the best for the uh, future of the economy? Is that widespread? Well, I think it could be. I mean, I, I don't know enough about it to be able to say that this acre ought to be wilderness and this acre ought not be. But uh, just the idea that you'd look at a number and you say, well, that sounds like a big number, so that's enough, um, I don't think is a proper way to approach it. They all have to be looked at for the characteristics that are there, the characteristics that should be there. Um, as I'm sure the other panelists know better than I, the, the, uh, what qualifies as wilderness is, is extensive and you have to go through several hoops to, to de so designate. And, and, and the final analysis to actually be declared wilderness, it requires an act of Congress. So it's not something that just gets pulled out of a hat. Claire, you, you might disagree with that. Well, yeah, I, this, uh, I'd like to contrast what George has said about the economy, helping the economy. I'd like to relate to you what we have in Garfield County. In the boundaries of Garfield County right now, we have three national parks, two state parks, a national recreation area, a national monument, uh, 25,000 acres designated as wilderness at this time, and a half a million acres of, of wilderness study areas. And uh, we're still suffering as one of the most underdeveloped uh, counties in the state, economically suffering. So. As far as helping the uh, wilderness, helping our county out, it just hasn't happened. Well, Mark, from your background as an expert, maybe we should just reiterate to the audience exactly what wilderness is by the 1964 law. Sure, wilderness by definition is, is an area that's off limits to any kind of motorized travel. It's off limits to any kind of development. Uh, wilderness will uh, allow prior uh, grazers, cattle people, to continue with their, uh, their operations. But hi history has shown that a lot of times those people are sort of harassed out of the business because of the uh, pressure that comes after the designation is there. But if, something's if something is wilderness, all of those uh, wealth generating activities uh, from the ground, timber, grazing, uh, minerals, uh, are, are off, off limits. So what, what, you, what your contention is, is that, that the wilderness designation uh, eliminates uh, both non-sustainable, i.e. mineral extraction, but it also eliminates sustainable, i.e. forestry, as, as, a, as a, a function within that terrain. Does, it, does that, have you experienced something like that in Garfield? Absolutely. 
And I, I think another thing ought to be added to what Mark has said about the Wilderness Act itself, the language in the Wilderness Act, and we've always contended in our area that we, we will agree to go along with the law. Now, the Wilderness Act is a law, and in that law it states that in order to be uh, considered for designation as wilderness, an area must be 5,000 acres in size, unroadless, and uh, uh, untrammeled by man, and provide outstanding opportunities for solitude. It has to have a unique characteristic, I believe, is one of the criteria, of it, or, but I or think geological main, or historical impact. I think the main, the main uh, uh, overriding uh, ca uh, thing to be considered, though, is this 5,000 acres and roadless. And that's pretty hard to find. If they can find that in our county, we'll help them. Designated. Designated. <laughs> George, mm -hmm. what about... What about um, uh, you know, it seems like this debate gets defined on either wilderness, the most extreme, mm -hmm. or, you know, totally open. Uh, what are some of the, you know, where is the Tribune's thought as far as middle ground goes? Well, it depends on the acreage involved. I mean, it, we don't set ourselves up as an expert to be able to point to a specific point on a map and say this ought to be wilderness, this ought to be a national monument, this would be fine for a strip mine. We, we're not qualified to make that judgment, but there are other people who are. They certainly should uh, consider the input from, from local officials, county commissioners and state legislators. But I think sometimes what's forgotten is that if, if it's federal land, it is owned, owned by the people of the United States. It's not Utah's land. It's not Garfield County's land. It's the land belongs to the people of the United States in the same sense the White House, the Capitol, and Yosemite National Park. Those are the owners. Now, you have every right, you have every right, like a lot of people in big cities do, to complain about absentee landlords and how they don't pay enough attention to their land, they don't keep it up, uh, the, the, the land that's lost off the tax rolls because it belongs to the federal or the state government. Those are very valid concerns that, that the federal government should do a better job of dealing with. You know, I, I'm sitting here looking at the clock, and I'm fully realizing that today should be an hour-long show because <laughs> we're just getting started, and we've gone through our first segment. Uh, when we come back, I would like to ask... Um, uh, Mark, you look like you were, uh, were on the verge of a comment about this. And so we'll open it up to a little bit more dialogue between you, uh, the three, directly. And we'll take a break here from the county seat, and we'll be right back in just a minute. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge, snowmobiling Monte Cristo, ice fishing Bear Lake, skiing the backcountry, fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. What brings you to St. George? Business meeting. Staying long? Just here for the day, quick in and out. Hey, I just landed. Not too bad. Why so fast? Stay any longer? We'll run out of things to do. On second thought. <gasps> Buddy, something's come up. I'm gonna need another hour. Can we push the meeting till noon? I should have booked a weekend. What are the words that describe the perfect destination? Finding them all in one place is easy if you know where to look. Millard County in the heart of Utah offers ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and nature at its most epic. Millard County, Utah. Find out what you've been searching for. 